What is your name? My name is John Holden. All right, and where did it all start? Where did you go get undergrad? Any grad school degrees? Okay, so I did my undergraduate degree at Concordia University in Canada, and then I did a master's at Florida State in sport management, and then I went and did a law degree at Michigan State and a law degree at the University of Ottawa, and then I decided to go and do a PhD at Florida State again. Okay, what was the PhD in? Sport management. Okay. Now, what year did you start at Spears? Throughout all of that, when did you come to Spears? I started at Spears in 2018. Okay. And what courses do you teach? I teach uh, Legal and Regulatory Environment and Business, which is more commonly known as B-Law. I teach uh, the Sports Law class, which is uh, MGMT class 3963 called Social Issues in Sport Management. And I teach uh, a Name, Image, Likeness and the Law class, which focuses on name, image, and likeness in college sports. Okay, so touching on that, what do you think are the top three things students should take away from that course? I think one of the big things that they should take away is that college sports has changed a lot over the years. One of the other big things to take away is that the, the ability of athletes to make money from their name, image, and likeness really just levels the playing field and makes them like other students on campus. It's not something special that they're getting, it's simply leveling the playing field. And I think sort of the final thing is that this is not the end of the sort of so-called student athletes rights movement. And there's a lot of other areas that student athletes and those advocates in the area are fighting for, including recognition of student athletes as employees of the university. Okay. Now, you mentioned movements. What are some of the movements that have happened? Sure. So, I think the biggest thing that's happened in the last couple of years has been the NCAA's change of position that allows student athletes to begin earning money. Um, for a hundred years, the organization had said that that would ruin college sports. You can't do that. If athletes make money, they'll just be professional. After a number of states began passing laws allowing athletes to do this by virtue of state law, the NCAA at the last minute sort of threw up their hands and said fine. So that's a pretty substantial change. Okay. Um, when it comes to law in that area, what are some things that people may not know? So I think some of the things that people don't know are just how many areas of law affect people in everyday life really, and not just college sports, but the law impacts everything. Every time you uh, buy something at a store, you're engaged in a contract negotiation. The same is true of sports. It's uh, the, the number of laws that run through our everyday lives that we don't even think about are so numerous, and it really is uh, a long list. Okay, when it comes to specifically NIL law, Sure, so when we're talking about NIL, we're talking about intellectual property, we're talking about contracts, and we're talking about antitrust as well. So it's these organizations getting together and collectively making decisions on behalf of another group of people. Okay.